And I thought, I thought well, maybe I'm just having a bad day today that people are wondering about, about demons. But I wonder what you think about demons. And I wonder what you think about demonic possessions today. I mean, we have this man in the Gospel of Mark that is clearly possessed by something. Something has taken a hold of him. Something has this grip on him and his life. And, and he's not who people think he ought to be. And so Mark tells us that he is filled with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit. So what do you think about demons and possessions? Maybe you think that, uh, that uh, you know, the history of the Bible is really just coming into play in the Gospel of Mark this morning where people suffered from various psychological and mental illnesses and they were not diagnosed in medical terms. So people just simply said that they were possessed. Possessed by an unclean spirit. What do you think? Do you think that we could actually be talking here the Bible is actually talking about some type of supernatural being whose intentions are to hurt us, to, to hurt humans, whose actions towards humans are malicious and dangerous and, and bad. Maybe you think that. But we get to experience here a little bit about how Jesus experienced demons in his pre-scientific world. In Jesus' day, no one doubted whether or not demons existed. Everybody knew that demons existed. Everybody knew about the power of demons. Demons that are called in the Gospel this morning unclean spirits. Everybody knew about that. And they believed that these demons were stronger than people. And that these demons could enter people and that they could dominate these people and that they could completely take over their personalities, completely take over their behavior. They believed this. I don't know what you think about demons or demonic possessions. But maybe, just maybe, maybe you have had a front row seat for an addiction. Maybe it was your own addiction. Or maybe you sat closely next to somebody else who had an addiction. How we behave when we're in the grip of addiction looks and sounds very much like the descriptions of people who are possessed in the Bible. Addicts know that the addiction, the substance, is powerful. More powerful than what they could ever control certainly more powerful than they are. Addictions are stronger than people and they can enter us and they can dominate us and they can completely take us over. And they take over our personalities and our behaviors. Or maybe you know about this. Maybe you know what it is like to not be able to stop doing something that you know is not good for you. I mean, maybe you know that sometimes in life that you just are not able to remove yourself from something that is evil, from something that is disastrous. And, and maybe it's something as simple as an argument. An argument, even though you have a tiny sense somewhere that you might even be wrong, you're still unwilling to let go of that argument. And there you are, and you're talking or you're yelling at someone you love, and all the words that come out of your mouth seem to have been put there by an evil spirit or a demon of some kind, and you wish that someone would just shake you so that you would stop saying those things that were so damaging or so hurting or so evil. Maybe you've felt that way. Or maybe you've been possessed by anger, or maybe you've been possessed by jealousy, Maybe you've been possessed by grief. Maybe you've been possessed by your illness or your sickness. 
Maybe you've been possessed by your expectations of yourself to be successful in everything that you do. Or maybe others' expectations for you, you are possessed on. You see, I think that we are all filled with demons of one kind or another. A demon is anything that's got its grip on you. A demon is anything that's got its hold on you and will not let you go. It is more powerful than you, and you can do nothing yourself to rid yourself of that grip, of that which has you in its hold. So, what do we really mean when we talk about demons and possessions? Do we mean all of these? Do we mean some of these things? Do we mean none of these things? Well, into a scene where demons are clearly <coughs> present, Jesus walks in. That's our gospel story, or maybe I have backwards. Maybe into a scene where Jesus is teaching, walk in the demons. You see, it's so tempting and tempting in this passage to focus on the demons. It's so tempting for us in this occurrence of these words of the Gospel of Mark to focus our attention on the supernatural occurrence of of demons, and I have obviously succumbed to this temptation myself in my sermon. But look at where Mark is directing us. Mark wants us to focus on Jesus, not the demons. Mark wants us to focus on Jesus' power and Jesus' authority, not the power and the authority of the demons. This is what Jesus tells us. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. He entered into the synagogue, and he taught as one having authority. And people were amazed. People were astonished. So I guess it's unusual for people to show up on the Sabbath and have the startling experience that the preacher actually knows what he or she is talking about. It normally doesn't happen, but here when Jesus was talking, he knew what he was talking about, and the people were astonished. They were amazed. The centerpiece of this scene is this gospel storyteller. It is Jesus. It's not the demons at all, either literal or figurative. It is all about Jesus and Jesus' power and Jesus' authority. The demons are in cinema. The demons are on the fringes. But you know, demons don't feel incidental, especially when demons have you in their grasp. Demons don't feel that they're on the fringes when they are holding you ever so tightly that they will not let you go. In the story, the demons see Jesus and they name him because Jesus scares them. The demons are scared by this Jesus. And they say to him something like, This town isn't big enough for both of us, Jesus of Nazareth. One of us is going to have to go. Have you come among us to destroy us? The demons say to Jesus, and of course, the demons are right. The demons are 100% correct on this matter. And they're right on both accounts. The demons are powerful, but Jesus is more. The demons have power, but Jesus has more power. And yes, Jesus has come to destroy the demons. Jesus has come to destroy the power, the grip that they have over humans. Jesus knows the demons are powerful and he addresses them. Demons are more powerful than we are and in a sense we like Jesus. We have to give the demons their due as well. We need to acknowledge that these demons beat us down time and time again. And of course, the next recognition is that though the demon is more powerful than we, there is one who is more powerful than the demon. And that is Jesus Christ. 
So remember the demon's cry of distress. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And so if the demons know this, if our demons know this, if your demons know this, then you ought to know this as well. That Jesus has come to destroy the demons. And we all have demons. We all have them. Whether they are the kind that Jesus cast out, whether they are the kind responsive to programs of recovery, or maybe just the kind of demons that annoy the daylights out of us in life. And, and in a way, this last kind, these demons are the most insidious. And I'll tell you why they're the most insidious. I'll tell you why that these demons are the most frustrating, because there's no diagnosis for these demons. There are only long-standing destructive patterns of relating to other people and to ourselves. And I will acknowledge before you today that I struggle with these demons every single day of my life. I struggle with these demons because every day these demons are trying to trip me up. Every day these demons are trying to get a hold of me. Every day these demons are trying to get their grasp on me and my life to make me less loving, to make me more judgmental, to make me less connected to the people who matter the most to me. These demons get a hold of me and they make me paranoid. They make me par paranoid about my own little petty troubles and concerns in this life. Demons, we all have them. And we need to recognize their power. But we also need to recognize that there is one who is more powerful than all of these demons. And that is the one that comes to us in the bread and the wine. That is the one through the Holy Spirit promises to be with us and to be in us and to live through us, this Jesus Christ. And so just as the demons recognize Jesus as the Holy One, the Mighty One, the Powerful One of God, then maybe we too ought to recognize Jesus as this Powerful One, the Mighty One, this Holy One of God. And maybe we too ought to turn to this Jesus and His power to take over our demons, to give us a little bit of the power that He has, to give us a little bit of the peace that He has, the peace that passes all understanding, that powerful peace, or even the peace that will just get us through this moment, or get us through this day. This is what we ask, because this town this town is not big enough for both demons and Jesus. Your life is not big enough for both your demons and Jesus. Jesus has the power to overcome this world. Amen. Amen.